Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Time to do a follow-up on my last video, which was on the U2 Sphere concert. Unbelievable. Actually, that video went viral. I was a little surprised because there's so many videos out there, uh, but I'm glad many people enjoyed it, and all the new subscribers welcome you as well. This is a channel that's mainly about audiophile stuff, audiophile gear, but um, I also, I'm not one of those audiophiles that you've heard about, only listen to certain type of esoteric music and... Uh, kind of a weirdo. I, well, I'm a weirdo for sure, but not in the stereotypical audiophile sense. I've gone to Coachella, uh, Robert Plant, Allison Krauss, all these bands, uh, Gorillaz, uh, constantly put live music as well on the channel, so you may enjoy some of those videos versus the more nerdy stuff. But what I wanted to do today is accomplish a few goals. Review the concert for from the standpoint of the band, how they performed, and my thoughts on that, and the venue, both visuals and audio for audiophile purposes. And by the way, I'm wearing Google, these are the, not Google, this is a Meta Goggles, Facebook Goggles, where I was able to record uh, with this camera here. Now, I did catch a little bit of my cowboy hat, so I didn't release, well, there's one video I released with stuff I filmed on this. The audio is not quite as good, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it up in this previously unreleased footage, from these goggles, I'm gonna put it up for you so you at least have the visuals and see stuff that I haven't, excuse me, released yet. So uh, this is just one part of my wardrobe that night. The other part that I had, well, I had glow in the dark tattoos, which really paid off when they played ultraviolet and turned the whole thing into an ultraviolet scene. That was really cool. But one thing I wanted to show you guys, I was wearing this. A lot of people thought I was intentionally dressed to be Bono, but. This is how I normally dress, guys. Um, and what was funny is, in hindsight, there's a part in that video where he points, and it looks like he's pointing at me now that I look at it, uh, to come on stage. And I think it was because I was wearing these goggles and hat that he wanted to wear. But I was so clueless at the time because he had brought somebody on stage earlier, but as usual, it was a pretty girl, um... I thought he was pointing at some girl around me. Some other guy who went way behind me leaped ahead and got on stage. And you even hear him say no. So I don't think that was the guy he's intended. I don't know if it was me. But Doug, my friend who was there with me, and, uh, and I both theorized he wanted to bring me up there to wear these. Because I think they're right his style. But anyway, let me put on some regular glasses. This is my normal nerdy look. But well, let's get into a review of the sphere. Like I said, I'm going to break this into parts. And let's talk about the uh, audio side first because I'm an audiophile. And, well, in fact, it's a macro takeaway on my channel. I've always said that video footage and uh, DSP are two things that get overlooked or shunned in the audiophile realm. Well, guess what? <laughs> Nothing will make the argument more convincing than going to a concert at the sphere. When you get that close, like I ha was, and I've been to countless concerts, you can't record anything. In fact, you normally have to have ear protection if you're that close uh, to the stage. It's usually a garbled mess. If you've ever seen cell phone video recordings on YouTube, it came out pretty good. Even when I zoomed, which actually adds gain to the camera, uh, usually that's a no-no in terms of audio quality. It was listenable at all different perspectives and that close to the stage. And the 16,000 drivers, hundreds of feet away, if you noticed, when I panned around, you didn't see a single drive, uh, speaker anywhere other than the monitors on stage for the band. It's an incredible audio experience that no matter where you are, uh, they use this wave field synthesis. It's called holoplot. And for those that like to get into the weeds, my audiophile crew, I'm going to have an expert. You guys know who the expert is. I represent Bach, Theoretical Applied Physics, Edgar Schwery. He knows all about the wave field synthesis, the matrix type speakers that are being used inside the, uh, the sphere. So I'm going to have him on to talk about that in more detail. So if you are interested in getting to the weeds, I'll have that. But just from my perspective, never before have I been that close and been able to record that good of quality and hear that good of quality, even better than what you heard on the recording. That's what you got live. Super well-balanced sound, not overly bass, muddied, too loud. And for people that were higher up, I think he was doing some things like whispering in the mic that using the beaming technology that they had, they had some special effects up there. So 
real quick to deviate, regardless of where you sat at this concert, you had certain advantages. Now, would I have traded my spot second row on the floor for the people in the top? No, but if I had tickets up there, they definitely would have been a better experience than any other venue like arenas and stadiums with PA speakers. That's terrible compared to what you hear here. No echo and excess reverb. The quality was just top notch. And like I said, they were able to give these people special effects because in certain parts of the uh, concert, he even said, you guys up there hear that when he was whispering into the mic that we up front couldn't hear. So they were doing some fun stuff for everybody in the venue. And that, that, that technology is pretty impressive. But again, being up close was phenomenal from a lot of perspectives. Uh, audio, I've taken care of talking about that, at least on the basic level. Visually, unbelievable being that close, uh, being able to see face-to-face -face in many, many respects. You saw my video. But also what was really cool is it was so immersive. I, I think with or without you, that one visual when the ball turned into the exploded uh, painting that was done by an artist. It's all, I think, extinct species or endangered species of Nevada that were captured in that picture and covered the wall, uh, the whole sphere. And with that sphere LED technology, they can make it look like a box. They can make it look close to you, far from you, at different parts. You felt like it was 3D, 3D with little twinkly things raining down on you. It's incredible what can be created. But that with or without you was probably uh, unforgettable till the day I die. I won't re forget that moment and hearing that combined with an audio visual. So again, something I've always talked about as an audio file. Those are some of the moments that you'll never forget when you can combine your visual senses with your audio senses. Um, but there is some drawbacks. Uh, well, let me talk about being up front again. The other advantage of being up front is a lot of times I could turn around and basically see what Bono was seeing. I'm six foot three. Yeah, he was a little bit higher of the stage, so he probably had an extra five, six foot perspective. But it was so cool even seeing the stands on top of the visual when I turned around. It gave me the impression like what Bono was seeing. And that was just cool in itself. Uh, but the visuals wrapped around, there was just a small patch of black in the very upper 180 degree behind me that had all the air conditioning vents. That wasn't speakers. Those were air conditioning to filter to the entire uh, floor, which was very comfortable. I was very surprised that that was where, because you couldn't see air conditioning vents. You couldn't see speakers anywhere. That's a marvel in itself. Uh, and like I said, the quality audio and visually was stunning. Now, in terms of any drawbacks or negative, most of it has come from people criticizing the band. And, but I will talk about one thing about the sphere in that this particular concert, there were some songs where there wasn't a whole lot of visuals. And I even turned to my friend Doug and I'm like, what are the people up there looking at? Because there's nothing basically on the screen at all. Not even a, a camera on Bono's face to blow it up bigger. And you would, they were pretty much kind of like ants for those people way up there. So there are going to be some moments if you're high up or farther back where you're not going to get that immersive wow moments, OMG type moments. Uh, but still, the moments that they did create were well worth waiting for. And if you're a fan of the band and like the music, those songs that they did, mostly the acoustic set, are for hardcore fans. And I really love them. I mean, they were some great stuff. They brought from Rattle and Hum and other albums. Uh, it wasn't just all Octone Baby. So, yeah, I, I was very impressed that they picked the right songs uh, and gave you interest for hardcore fans as well as ones that just like the hits. Now, Bono's voice, I see people criticizing his voice. This guy was phenomenal for his age, in my opinion. I've seen Robert Plant. I even saw Rolling Stones in the 90s, and all they were doing in the 90s was still too old. They were just... Uh, talking the song instead of singing them. Uh, but it's still fun. But no, Bono was definitely trying to sing them. And uh, maybe I'll even put up a post or something. He posted where he's still getting acclimated to the dry air of Las Vegas and doesn't even talk in between concerts uh, to save his voice. So for a guy that's 63 years old, doing two shows back-to-back, -back, two hours, 22 songs, 
Uh, he was moving around, a lot of energy. If you watched that highlight video right up front, he did seem to get tired. Doug talked me up a few times. Is he going to pass out? I mean, he was a trooper trying to sing everything, and he didn't do what a lot of artists do, even young ones. When they get up there, and I've seen this with Adele and others, you know, they got their famous songs, and then they do nothing but turn the mic on in the crowd and let the, the crowd sing it to them. You know, we're paying to hear them, not vice versa. Now, what Bono did perfectly is allow you to participate and do a little bit of that, but he carried the day. And I give him major props. I went in, not a huge YouTube fan. I'm not one of those hardcore guys. But I came out much more respect than ever for them, uh, just based on this concert alone. And so I think they get a bad rap for anybody saying, Bono's washed up, Bono's this, that, and the other. No, I, I, I think he deserves major props for this concert and how he performed. And really, there was no hardly any... Uh, practice that they could do is a new venue. Uh, second night is when we saw him. Yeah, there were a few parts where Edge messed up and they talked to It was funny. And, you know, I don't know. They changed some of the words even to the song, the lyrics. And I don't think it was a mistake. I think intentionally some things were added or changed by Bono, which added some flavor. I like my video versions of some of these songs better than the streaming versions now. So that's the ultimate litmus test of whether... I enjoyed something, and it's high quality. Is that I would rather listen to my YouTube video of some of these songs than even the streaming studio recording. Yes, you can nitpick it a lot more, but that raw emotion and the visuals, all the things that go with it, I, do, I think they deserve major props. So I just wanted to give you my general review. The, the VIP experience, let me tell you a little bit about that because I had VIP experience. Kept the little VIP tag as well. It's going to be a permanent fixture back here. It was mostly for stuff outside the venue before for the entire weekend. You kind of want to come the whole weekend. There's a setup in the Venetian, a pop-up, and then they have a concert of their Zoo TV tour uh, footage that's been remastered for Dolby Atmos. And that was really fun to watch pre-concert to see the Octone Baby Zoo, T Zoo TV concert back then. Remastered, high-quality audio, seeing Bono much younger, and then watching it live the next day in the Sphere. I tell you what, I think the sphere, it just kills it comparatively. Yes, there are some differences in Bono's voice, obviously, but in terms of entertainment purposes, nobody's walking out during that U2 show at the sphere. Um, it's just too riveting and too good. Um, other VIP perks, plus or minus, we got in, everybody's asking me, how did you get the second row? Well, I basically stood up for six hours straight. We got there three hours early. They were supposed to let us in, VIPs, in at 5 p.m. before the major, the general admission people, uh, but they didn't. It was at 6.15. We got let in the same time as the other people did, which was kind of disappointing, but they gave us a direct access to the floor, so we got to the floor faster, and then that's how I was able to get second row center because we were there a long time. My feet were killing me. I mean, I've gone to Disney World from 8 in the morning till past midnight and walked, you know, whatever it is, 20,000 steps. My feet were 10 times better feeling than that night. Now I wore some crazy shoes to go with this outfit, but uh, that was a mistake. Wear comfortable shoes if you're going to be on the floor. And I was able to go five hours without a bathroom break. If you have that issue, you may want to worry about that. What happens is once you get on the floor, if you get there two or three hours early, uh, there is a lot of movement. You can go back and forth. Doug did go to the bathroom, my friend, and buy drinks for us. But there's a point where a little car comes up and a DJ, and he starts playing in on the floor. And that car actually moves on the floor. So you're not going to want to be leaving and trying to get back once that part of the concert starts, the pre-concert with a DJ. There is no opening band, but there is that pre-concert DJ, which unfortunately was a mixed bag. I mean, he'd play a great song like Psycho Killer by the by uh, Talking Heads, and then like Billy Joel, you know, and uh, you know, not even a really great song by Billy Joel. It was just very dis disjunctive. But I think they were late showing up by an hour, if I remember the story. But So he ran out of material, I think, to play as a DJ. But in any case, overall, I think the VIP experience worth it. If I got these tickets given to me, but if I had paid four or $5,000 for it for that experience of the weekend, including the room and board that came with the VIP package, uh, I would not have felt 
like I was ripped off in the least. In fact, I was already thinking about doing it again, paying my own way, going back, bringing my daughter, or going to another concert as soon as whatever is a really, you know, hopefully band like I like a lot is Gorillaz. Uh, you know, maybe they'll be there. Yeah, I, you, you'll see a lot of stuff on my channel from Glorilla to Gorillas. Uh, Glorilla is actually going to be at Austin City Limits next week. So I might go attend that. And if so, I'd probably try to get the second row as well. So stay tuned for that. Hopefully you enjoyed my review. Like I said, I'll have in the weeds, depth, in-depth discussion of the technology behind the uh, Wayfield synthesis, the hollow plot stuff in a future video. So stay tuned, sign up, subscribe, and I'll see you back here soon.